everybody. I'm doing a session for a client. This is going to be a really tough one. This client's going through some really intense um, experiences with um, demons, interdimensional beings. We'll find out for sure once I get into the into your energy field and start looking around. Um, I can imagine this has been really hard for you. I know what it's like to have um, interactions with the spirit realm and to feel that presence inside. Now it's kind of draining your energy field and it's scary. It's incredibly scary. It's confusing. Um, not many people are going to really understand um, what you're going through because the world doesn't really um, talk about those types of experiences as um, as part of our reality, you know. Um, they're interdimensional experiences that a sensitive human being has. Um, but let me, I'm going to read these goals out loud so um, we can all get a feel for what you're going through. I'm going to enter into your energy field and we're going to get started, okay? Thank you so much for reaching out. I'm really happy to be here to help you. Okay, so you say, I'm dealing with two possible sub-level, two primordial demons and a possible tier three demon of a ghoul or gas disposition. They shapeshift and are able to jump through dimensions and time. They said they were primordial, the light beings I'm working with, who I met in a forest while burning herbs to please the nature spirits. He told me I resurrected a dinosaur when I somehow channeled these. They blamed me for stealing and breaking some book. But a goddess told me I tried to put it back together. But in truth, the demon stole this. And they're using the demon queen to blame me for this to the divine. They try to rape me. They block all my chakras. My light being said they can't hurt them because they're blinded by their light. They shapeshift at will based on people in my memories. And I literally had an all-out war with them in my mind. They prey on my insecurities, but they can't beat me because I know who I am. But they're spying on me for information. Be careful, they're pure evil and very cunning, and use some type of black magic to repossess me. They almost killed me the other um, killed me the other and drained all my energy out of my solar plexus chakra. The light being and divine said they could easily beat them, but I need an outside source that's equally as skilled in some manner of magic at counteracting whatever they're doing. I've watched some videos um, of yours and found you by accident. I think if any know know what know they're talking about and can help it's you these things entering my life cause things that probably shouldn't happen i'm somehow able to hear the dead in the astral around and whatever enters my third eye and my head please please help i'm desperate at this point i spend day and night clearing my chakras and i'm, I'm unable to focus or enjoy life and i constantly hear them and trust me they're evil they will about everything too and tell you they're they're good but they're not mm. Mm. this is a lot it's about time you got some some support <laughs> Just, I'm just really, um, ex just really receiving all this, okay? So I can, I mean, I'm already getting kind of pulled into the journey state. So I'm going to go ahead and relax and get started here. I mean, I'm just walking in and I'm, I'm just simply stating these lessons are complete and sending all this back. Because it's time for you to simply be yourself without all of this in the way. Wow, there's just a lot going on in here. First thing I'm looking at um, has to do with your mental body en energy. Um, it's really projected i mean it's really almost like you have a, a round um helmet on that goes even your throat is involved in this um and it's kind of expanded but it's like a bubble of energy and we're even in a much larger sphere almost like a space station but it's completely open 
I mean, when I come in here, there's just um, information and I don't know, are these projections, um, what is the tangibility of this energy? Like how dense is it? Is it, um, you know, I, I can tell. <sighs> As far as what has consciousness, what is um, simply an insecurity or a fear, what would be your ego breaking down, what would be um, an actual spirit or living consciousness. Um, so I have to really evaluate all the different energies that are here. And there's just a lot of fabric in, in a way like there's I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on in here. I'm just going to quiet it all down and get into like more of a grounded state even though we're in like outer space, I can see stars and black everywhere. And here you have this orb around your head and then we're inside of an orb in the universe. Okay, I'm gonna just step into your shoes. And I'm sending energy out from inside of you. I'm just sending this away. It, what is what is this? I don't know yet. We're but you're contaminated with all kinds of energy stuff. So what is it? I don't know yet. We're just gonna get it out and send it away. Okay. So I'm just sending it away. Not just in the front, in the back. Okay. You're just like jammed up everywhere. So we just send it away. Imagine if there's all this information. Um, how can you tell like if it's if it's an insecurity that's communicating with you or a fleeting thought or your higher self? Um, you have to work with love. You have to be centered in your heart. And anything else that's talking to you, just send it away. Like there's just so much crap in here. Like just send it away. You're going to have to get grounded with, with nurture. Grounded with supportive messages. Because this stuff will confuse the living daylights out of you. It will confuse the living daylights out of you. I, anymore, I, I like, for me, um, I find that, that the more philosophical, um, the more deep into the wisdom and understanding that there's so many versions of timelines and history, there's so many infinite versions of truth, um, a single answer doesn't actually exist. There's always a desire for an answer. There's always a desire for, for well, what is the one truth? There's no one truth. So they can tell you a million things. It'll all be correct and all be incorrect. So what it comes back to is, um, what what is the spirit of yourself? Um, what is your power in all of this as a power of love? And if you get the language out of the way and you just feel the threads of, of energetic communication, not as a language, not as saying something, not as defining itself or explaining something, just send that crap away. Just let it be threads of, of what is like energetic um, essence, um, a feeling of sorts. If it doesn't feel right, send it away. Um, sometimes when things don't feel right, we do need to actually look at it because we could be um, needing to work on something inside of ourselves. So is that really a spirit or is that something of yourself that you need to work on? Um, so you have to learn ways, techniques to discern um, all this stuff that you're picking up on, okay? Um, I have to start here because there's just so much stuff. And a lot of this doesn't matter. Um, believe it or not, a lot of this is just like looking in a garbage dump and saying, wow, this old broken bottle is, is so important. Um, but really what we need to do is just leave that place, leave this dimensional garbage dump space and actually bring you to a place of true value where love exists because you're only going to find the most valuable essence of wisdom and philosophical meaning in a place where you're surrounded by that vibrational truth, okay? But for some reason, I mean, what I'm picking up on at this time, there's still a lot to look at here, but you, you've kind of found, I mean, some somehow you're sort of collecting like a, an energy junk collector, um, collecting um, in, information, I guess. I don't know if I want to define it as information. It's almost like collecting stuff collecting um, ideas or perspectives, but it's not happening from a place of wholeness, 
wholeness. It's happening from a place where there's broken things. Um, so if you're talking to broken spirits, broken, everything that they tell you is junk. How can you tell the difference between whether you're communicating with a junk collector spirit who's just going to give you junk and now you're, you're full of their junk? Um, you don't need that because you're not a trash can. You're not. Um, and so your power, like you don't need to even, who cares if they're spying on you? Like you don't even need to be in their space. Like they don't even need to be in your space. They don't even matter in my opinion because they're that junky and trashy. Um, and so I don't hang out in the trash can and I recommend others don't either. If they want to hang out in the trash, they can. Um, I don't choose to hang out in the trash. So I'm taking you. I mean, it, I, let me ask you if you feel like you would like to stay here, if you would like to journey to another vibrational space where you have nothing to do with that because it's, it's, there's nothing to find here. It's like, ooh, and being a kid and ooh, an interesting treasure. And it's like, um... I don't know, some like, it's real, a real diamond. And it's actually just like some piece of plastic, you know, <laughs> like, um, there's all this interesting junk here. Um, is it real? <laughs> like, what is the tangibility and depth of it? So as you see, I'm just pushing all this energy out, like sending it away, just more. I'm just like sending it, <laughs> like sending it away. There's just so much here. Still sending it away, okay? Front, back, all, all, above, below, all that. In fact, we could just move all this stuff off the table, start fresh. We don't need any of these, we don't need to understand any of these demons or any of this stuff. Um, the demon goddess or the, you know, what the demon queen, the, the, nothing, literally, not that interesting, not that important. Um, they don't have any power except what they can intimidate you with. So they have zero power because they're broken. To become demonic is to become broken, is to become as precious and valuable as the stuff we throw in the trash, a broken bottle. Um, yeah, if it's um, pointed at your face and used to cut your throat, it's pretty intimidating and scary. Now the broken bottle has power. But truly, it is useless. It is a useless item. It is a piece of junk. So you're working with somehow these spirit broken souls um, which tells me that maybe there's an aspect of you that wants to heal them. And maybe it's time for you instead of, you know, you can continue to heal yourself. But really, maybe you're wanting to heal them. And you just didn't realize that at the conscious level yet. Um, because I don't see you as a trash collector type. <laughs> um, but I see now as I'm sending all this away... Is it possible that you're wanting to fix broken things? That you have an aspect of yourself that wants to fix broken things? And when it's translating between the energy world and a human mind, it, it gets confused, okay? So even for me, when I feel stuff, I have to go into a journey state to actually discern what's going on. Otherwise, my mind will c make it conflicted. It, I won't really know what's going on. So I have to go into this state to actually analyze the energy to see what's here. Um, because I have to use all my chakras in order to really know. Otherwise, I'm using my human mind, my human eyeballs, um, you know, in the moment of being human to try to make sense of this stuff. But when I close my eyes and I actually start to feel, to smell, to pick up on um, what is really going on here, I'll see another side to everything. That is more deep. That is a deeper um, truth of what's going on. There's still a lot of work to do here because it feels to me like you've gotten kind of, um, I mean, right now I'm just clearing stress. I just see you kind of roped up. It just got kind of intertwined with all of this. Um, I mean, you really got in the, the trap here, okay? So we there's all kinds of, like, I'm just seeing you and you're just all roped up and you can't get yourself out of this. You straight up cannot get yourself out of this. I mean, you're like a um, an animal that just, you know, got tied up and is hanging from a tree. Okay, so I have to do this first, all right? We're just going to keep going deeper and deeper and see what we find next. Because this seems to me like there's different sides to this story. But the first and most loudest side... <laughs> um, 
is that you're attracted to broken things and you've gotten lost in a place of broken stuff that has now kind of got you all tied up and you're completely turned upside down. So I have to get, sh get you out of this. Like I have to get you back on your feet again so you can start to see a new sense of clarity. And I think it's going to make you stronger to realize that you have a deep compassionate love um, for helping heal broken things. That's what I do is I heal broken things and demons are merely broken souls. They're souls that are broken. That's why they're demonic. <laughs> That's why they're, they're broken. They're, they've snapped, okay, somewhere. And they are separated from the light of all and they're afraid of healing. And so they keep spouting out their negative junk just like a human being, just you go to work and there's your negative coworker and they just won't shut up about it. You know, they're, they are in their own right, a de demonic force in this earth plane. And I'm just spewing out more negativity when the one thing that that negative coworker needs is a hug every single day and somebody to actually work with them to help give them some skill building techniques on how to turn that energy inside out so they can start working with the light inside themselves. Demons are the same way. They need therapy, okay? <laughs> they 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 need therapy. They don't have control over you unless you feel intimidated by them. But you haven't learned the power of yourself yet. You haven't learned the power of your own soul and how to actually channel that energy because the spirit realm and then the human world, like they don't have any power. Even as I'm talking about this, you're like, no, they're powerful. They're powerful. They're powerful. They're powerful. It's like, okay, well, I guess you're screwed. <laughs> you better change your tone because if they're powerful, how are you ever going to get yourself out of this? They aren't powerful. They're broken things. It's like a broken house is way stronger way better than a house that is super solid foundation um, full of love and harmony and clean and put together and balanced. You know, a house that is strong and balanced um, is actually whole. And that's what you are, okay? You're whole. The, the demon is the broken haunted house. And that is actually sad. That is, that needs help right there. That needs therapy right there. That has no power. That broken haunted house is wanting to die inside of itself, but can't ever die until somebody cares about that broken house. And somebody actually cares and, get in, and puts in a little bit of effort to heal those um, spirits, the cesspool of energy that was attracted to that brokenness to heal um, the house itself, um, to fill it with love and start landscaping, to heal the land. I mean, this is what we are here to do. And I feel like I'm having this conversation with you to remind you of what you came here to be. Um, because you're the type that would, that would see the broken and actually want to help it. But somehow it's getting conflicted between the human mind or perception of things. Um, where maybe you would be intrigued by the broken house, feel a calling to go in it, but then get lost inside of it. When actually you're to mend it, to heal it, to bring it back to life. Because when these demons are healed from the inside, they turn into angels. They turn into extraordinary, extraordinary souls. Um, and they have such a wealth um, to offer this world when they're healed, when they're bright. When the coworker, you know, gets the, gets the support they need to transmute all that negativity, they become a beautiful, bright person that has so much to offer the world. When the broken haunted house is now nurtured and healed, it becomes a beautiful home that can support a family and so much more, you know? So I'm supposed to have this conversation with you because I first have to um, shift your like your mind's perception of things to bring the power back to you because you you've got it's gotten skewed okay and you're strong enough you're so strong enough for this you are so strong enough for this and I'm proud of you okay I'm really proud of you it is one of the hardest things any human can go through is is to go through an experience where people just aren't going to get it, you know, unless they themselves have gone through it. I've already gone through experiences like this and horrifying, scary, 
terrifying. <laughs> but I found the strength inside myself and started to understand it was about love. It was all about love. And it, it was partially also my own ego breaking down as I was starting to become more tuned in with my role as a healer. And I thought I was being psychically attacked. I was being psychically attacked by my own ego that wanted me to stop and go back to being a 3D human. Well, no, I, that I there's only one way for me to go and I, I'm just going to keep growing and expanding. So I had to push through all of that, just like you're doing, right? Um, but I had to learn how to um, turn it inside out. And I found that love was the way. And to use my skills where you know how to heal your chakras, start seeing these demons, for instance, as having the same chakras. And start seeing that their heart needs so much love and light. And start talking to them like that. Don't, don't, you know, blah, 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 blah. They'll tell you whatever. Just like, nah, bleh, talk to the hen. Your heart needs so much love and light. And I'm so glad that I can be here to help you. Start visualizing the herbs that you were burning for the nature spirits. And see that beautiful memory and that beautiful gift and contribution to the earth and this nature spirits. See that taking place in the heart now of the this demon as a gift of healing this demon's own spirit, right? Don't be afraid to face the demon queen because the minute you do that and you face the demon queen and she shifts energetically and you realize that you had the power to do that, your whole world will change. And it, what is scarier? Facing them eye to eye and giving them the love that they need or enduring this nightmare? Enduring this nightmare is so hard, but I know how scary it is to face this stuff. It almost seems like it's impossible. It's almost impossible to do it because because there's so much, the energy of fear in is so loud that it's almost barfable and you don't know for sure if it's going to work. So you're always kind of like wanting to not go all the way. You have to stand your ground with it. Because you are the power, okay? And power is love. Because love is whole. Anything else is a deception, a manipulation, an illusion. An illusion can appear to be whole. But really it's just broken, scared, sad, manipulated junk. You need to start discerning what is the manipulated junk and what is the true love, okay? And anything manipulated junk... Don't be human like, oh, maybe um, I'll hurt its feelings or maybe I need to, you know, be nicer. The energy world is different. I mean, you need to be straightforward. You need to be like, nope, don't need any of that in my life. Thanks. See ya. Not. <laughs> like, I mean, you just need to be and nobody's feelings are hurt. If their feelings are hurt, that's their issue. I mean, we should really be like this as human beings to each other. I don't want to hang out with somebody who can't be honest with me. See ya. Never again talk to that person. That will teach them what they need to learn in order to become the person that now can be your friend later on. But human beings, we, we try to be polite about stuff. The, we do that with demons too in the spirit realm and all that. We can't, we got to be just straight forward. We got to be straight up about this, okay? And as I'm talking to you, I'm doing all kinds of energy work and I'm talking to your deeper consciousness to really kind of imprint the message so it becomes a part of you. So it becomes a part of you now. So you can start working with this now. Because I can see you conquering this with just the right ingredients of awareness about yourself and the situation. You could take it and you could run with it. You could really transform every, all of this. Okay. Let's see how things are looking. All right. you. So I've cleared out a lot of this junk, but you're still kind of... Um, you still kind of like... I don't want to put this. You still feel like you need some more information. Like you need to understand what was going on there. Like, so you want these demons to come back so you can talk to them? So you want the broken bottle to explain to you what's really going on? Um, I, I would recommend just seeing it for what it is and sending it away. Did you want to try to heal it? Because you getting information from it, you may have to let that go. There's so many things that have happened in my life. I have no idea why it had to be like that. I don't know why 
and I don't get any answers because it's for me, it's like, okay, I have to deduce it down to simplicity. Um, I was meant to go through that experience. I was meant to heal that experience. I'm meant to go to the next experience. And that's all I'll ever know about that. And I have to be okay with that. So sometimes you're going to have to be okay with not knowing and not having any kind of explanation. And the, and as time passes, though, you'll look back with a different pair of eyes and start to understand that it's not about the specific details like... Um, you could read in a textbook, this is this is the name of this demon and why this demon was attracted to you was because of this and exactly this, 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 this. All that stuff, just rip out the page and throw it away because in a couple years when you look back, you'll start to see what this was really all about was teaching you the power of yourself, okay? And so that is more important than any of that that textbook stuff, you know? But trust me, your mind wants the textbooks. If your mind wants the one plus one equals two. And I've been doing this for long enough. I don't even try to get that information anymore. I don't even care anymore. Because what matters most is, is harmony and balance and the deeper um, inspirations that create love and connectedness and support. It's more important than anything else. Okay, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What is this that you're trying to tell me here? We're still kind of vibrationally low from where I would prefer we be. You want to stay here. Again, I do not recommend this. Your mind has uh, broken parts in it and it's very exhausting. You're really attached to some something and it sort of comes in the form of like 12 beings, okay? And you want to help, but you also know that you could be the um, orchestrator of these souls, like um, almost like you are, are um, guiding them to do different things. Like this uh, soul number one, I ask you to go to this location um, and place um, orange energy here. Um, while soul number two, I ask you to place red energy here. Um, and then you, you create, you actually create extraordinary like healing. I mean, I'm looking at what is a, a pentagram. And you have like 12 um, souls that have um, different gifts and abilities. And you are here on Earth, and you're um, you're kind of like the Jean Luc Picard here, and you're commanding in a way, but you're just guiding them to what what your heart is telling you. Um, you're guiding them to go here, 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 here to create like a huge orchestrated, massive energy healing, um, moving event. And so you are guiding the souls to where they go based on what your intuition is telling you. And I see you guide all these into different directions and it creates a, a rainbow um, pentagram <laughs> like across the planet Earth. You create a giant rainbow pentagram on planet Earth. Um, it's pretty cool. It's like super extraordinary. What is strange is that you you're still, you're, you still kind of have the helmet on. You still are in a sphere and there's actually another bigger sphere over that one. And we're on a platform in the middle of outer space. And there's these souls, like 12 souls here. I still feel like this vibrationally low, in my opinion. Okay. Now this is where there's a major, a major something going on inside of you. <sighs> This is a something that is that is going to encourage you to think a certain way, to encourage you to, um, you're not, you need to go into a higher vibrational space. This is going to say, um, this is going to encourage you to feel like you're already there or to feel like, um, you know what you're doing now, everything's fine now, when really, um, you haven't, you haven't full, fully, um, completed with this lesson of learning. I just see this black shadow inside of you that is just sort of like hiding out and um, but is sort of somehow you're absorbing an influence to stay at a lower vibration without realizing it. 
So are they repossessing you or do they not leave? You know what I mean? I tell you, I need you to listen to me and I need you to come to a higher vibration. I need you to stop what you're doing. All this is cool and all, but it almost feels like, um, almost feels like, uh, too easy, too, uh, it's not, it's, it's not whole within itself. I see this about you. I see this totally about you. However, vibrationally, not correct. I need you to leave this space and come to a higher vibrational space with me. That is your choice. Are you ready? Now this, this shadow thing is, um, is kind of infiltrated you into just following through with the behavior. Um, to the point that, it, that it's going to be obvious that it's not your own behavior. I say, I need you to stop what you're doing. You really have a hard time. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place all of that we've seen thus far in an orb. And I'm going to set it over there. And I'm going to walk into your energy field again. And we're going to see the next thing, okay? This is going into more of the vulnerability you have with all of this. And the powerlessness you have with all of this. It's in a way you, this version of you has already given up your body to the spirit. Because you don't, you don't know what to do and you don't know how to be in control. Which you, you can't do that. Um, obviously you can and you have. So what do you do now? You have to stand up against this. You have to take a stand inside yourself. You have to say no to this. How do you do that? You can close your eyes and you can face this demon for yourself and remember your role as a healer. Okay? There's a reason why the introduction was clearing all this out so we could actually see you for who you are and what you what the gifts are that you came here with and why you're attracting this. Now we can look at one of these first shadows that is creating issues for you. You can't, f you're so distorted in your mind. You're, you're unable to get control of, of a strong frequency of thought and direction and focus. And because you keep insisting that it is in control of that, it is in control of all of that. I say, this is where you're going to have to be strong and say, I'm in control. Nobody's in control. I am in control. Say, I am in control. Yeah, see, <clears throat> you're attached as well. Your third eye is attached to the idea that this shadow is more powerful than you. I mean, I can feel how convinced you are of this, how convinced, how completely convinced you are. Like you, you've already, you've already bowed down to this inside yourself. So I have to change that so I can help you, which is through you wanting to help yourself, we can get rid of this, okay? You're having a really hard time. Your third eye is really vibrationally, like, kind of, um, it's, like, kind of, 
it's odd. It's like there's a coil that is a, a, a rounded like cone that goes sticks out, but then it also has one that pokes in. And for some reason, the, it's like copper coil, but it's not a balanced flow. It's distorting all of this energy with your third eye. You insist now he's gone. And I say, no, he's not. He isn't gone. So close your eyes. Use your heart. I want you to tell me where he is. You say you know what to do. It's not about him. It's about me. And you actually um, alter, you just remove this coil system from your third eye. And you say, I have to be completely myself. And you define this as one of your guides, actually, that has been challenging you in this life. Oh, man, you show me some interesting things. Like, um, you were a, an, a dog in a previous life. Like, I'm seeing a joyful, happy adorable dog um and you were guy a guide to a child that grows into a teenager like you were a guide for this um this child and this family you protected them and you protected them from evil spirits like they actually wanted a dog because they were afraid of evil spirits and you would bark at the evil spirits and you would bark the evil spirits away. You're a... It's some kind of blue dog. I don't know. There's Isn't there a dog that has a blue in it, its name? I just, I keep thinking of old yeller, but it's like some kind of, I don't know. I keep thinking of the word blue as well. You were really enriched in this life because you, you were so valued by your family. And you really, you were really close with a boy, this boy. I mean, best friends forever kind of thing. And when you got older, like, you, you knew that you couldn't be there to protect them anymore. And that was really hard for you. But you were, in a way, you were accepting of it as well because in a way you knew it was time to move on. You knew they were still going to be taken care of even if you weren't there in physical form. I mean, you were an extraordinary companion. You needed to remember that lifetime. Somehow the spirit of this dog is, is um, being reborn inside of you. Because again, you have the ability to clear evil spirits to clear negative energy i mean it comes back to you are a healer of broken things but this was protector as this dog you were protector of people of your family you weren't afraid either you were not afraid at all like you sensed it and you started barking and it, you, it seemed to work. All right, let's see what else you have to sh say. You say you need to fix your third eye and your crown. And that it isn't about the shadow. Again, you keep saying that you're starting to remember that the shadow was a spirit guide. Um, that what came to be a, cha a challenge for you to distort your understanding of things. It, you have to work on remembering who you are, so to speak. But you're wanting to heal your third eye and your crown is what you're saying. And I say, okay. You want to talk to me about your solar plexus as well? Give me a moment. I feel like there's... I mean, right now I'm just... I'm just using blue flame, okay, in your third eye. And I, I, I was using blue flame in your crown, but we can turn that to violet flame. It's kind of nice to 
use the chakra colors. And I love violet flame. I love blue flame. I find blue flame is really great for just completely dissolving negative energy, like instantaneously. It's like Archangel Michael fire. And it's so, it just transmutes it instantly. Unresolved emotions in your solar plexus. You were talking about insecurities. There's some things in here you're a little bit shy about me looking at. Same with your sacral chakra and root. I tell you that I really like the lifetime of you as the dog and that there's really nothing that you couldn't show me that I wouldn't be so honored to see, even if it's difficult stuff. I mean, it's hard to see any soul. I mean, you have to find your way by going through what is given to you. And if you find yourself in the, in the trash compactor of the universe looking for truth or whatever it is, you really are finding it. You're just not figuring out that you're here to heal broken things. Now we're figuring this out about you. So let's heal something broken inside yourself, so to speak. Let's heal that. All right, you're starting to kind of waffle here a little bit. Like, almost like you want to, but then you're starting to distract yourself away from that. Again, you have something stubborn about your nature. I still am encouraging you to go to a higher vibrational plane, but you just don't want to yet. And you won't explain why, but I have to just accept that. And we can do whatever healing we need to do here, but I keep encouraging you because the, the hardest thing for you to do is just simply say, yes, let's go. So why is that so hard? We need to let go of some things. We need to leave some things behind to just let it go. Okay. The next scene. And this is still, everything's interconnected. But what's happening is you're, you're showing me a new scene and you're opening your eyes and you see the black shadow in front of your eyes. And I'm seeing like a connection between this black shadow and your solar plexus. And I ask you, well, what do you make of it? Hmm. Again, it's like uh, you. I have got to bring you back to let's get let's get specific about this. It's clearly I meant to teach you how to do this, um, because otherwise I would just be doing everything. Um, but some of this isn't exactly what you think it might be. You know, some of this is. Um, you're on the right track, but you just need a little bit of an introduction to a new way of seeing it. And everything that I'm communicating with is you beneath the surface of your conscious mind. So your conscious mind can say, yes, I'm ready to go to the high vibrational place. But you have aspects of you deep down inside that are refusing, stubbornly refusing to do that. And if I can't get those to shift, then doesn't matter what you're saying at the conscious level. They're going to stay stubborn, okay? Okay. Okay, this is good. We're going to work through something in your solar plexus. Eyes are open. We're in a, a weird waiting room. 
and there's beings that are here and it's a shadowy place and there's a, a circulating fan on a uh, huge it makes takes up the whole size of the floor it's almost like a mouth that's going to just swallow you up in it i ask you why are you here and i show you again you are attracted to coming to these places why are you attracted to coming to these dark broken places why do you feel like you belong here You're kind of like a, like a hypnotic sleeping person. Just like you're not registering the conversation. So we're just going to let it happen, okay? You stand up and then you just start walking towards this blender. And in a way, there's a relief that you feel when you go into the blender and you just blend it into millions of pieces. And it feels like death for your soul so that you don't have to exist anymore. But all you do is become millions of versions of yourself that have a lot more lifetimes to go through. Don't throw yourself in the blender. You don't need to. You need to work on resolving this stuff. But we're going to go down the drain now, is what it's like. And you do die in a strange way. Like, it's almost like you have no eyes and your mind goes into a sleep state and you're just millions of dead souls. And you go down this tube and you get flushed out and just sprayed out like of a hose into the, the some sort of nothingness. And it's like oddly joyful because you're, you're finally dead. But the thing is, you aren't. And I, I, there's blue, it's, it's blue yeller. It's something like blue yeller. Um, like old yeller, but I keep seeing a dog comes and it's, it's blue. Maybe his name was blue. Um, but blue yeller comes and starts barking at you. In this place and is asking you to come come home come home and so blue yellow just keeps barking at you and you're having a hard time waking up but i see um vibrations happening in every one of these tiny little like shreds of soul and they're all individual souls from a one one soul that just went down a blender, an energetic blender, and became many parts of itself that died. That's literally what it's like. Um, but there's like little vibrations in every single one, like they're tiny little um, bits of water. And I see that they're vibrating. And all the pieces of water are starting to collect, and they're souls. And they're starting to collect as one soul. And you just can't get, your head is like shut down and you're having a hard time. You hear, you're aware of, but you can't follow through with what Blue Yeller is saying. And so you say, I need help, Blue Yeller. This is when Blue Yeller goes and gets guides, okay? Um, guides that are here to help you rise out of this dimension you don't need to be in this dimension anymore too many mirrors of struggle and suffering like you're getting swallowed up in it and you can let go of that shadow guide because i feel like your time is complete But I see through the shadow and I see an actually a benevolent being that that has to play hard, hard roles sometimes in order to help you learn the lessons about love that make you so much stronger. These are really complex guides, really extraordinary ones.
and this is all stored in your stomach and there's a big ocean wave that comes and it's just trying to like the wave is trying to kind of create um a movement to pull you back and out of there And you don't go the way you came. You just leave that place. For some reason, it's really hard to get you to say, I, I'm ready to leave this place. It's like really hard to get you to say it. But you did say, um, get help. Help me. And I stand here and I say, get up. You have the strength. You have to want to inside yourself. And now you fill with all your guides from inside your own heart. And the spirit of the dog is there too. It's like the spirit of a best friend. The spirit of yourself. This is a lot. I mean, there's so much energy weight. It's unbelievable. Like you're, you're having to walk through the most impossible glue energy glue. And you're having to just push through it with all your strength and all your willpower. And I say, keep going. Show this glue who's boss. Every step you take is going to get easier and easier. Oh, man. You have a part of you that gave up somewhere along the line. I don't know if it was in this life. You had an aspect of you that just like totally gave up. Um, that's still there. Um, this could be other lives. I mean, this this could be a lot of different things. But trying to rehabilitate the spirit and passion and the identity of who you are inside yourself um, is going to just totally shift you out of this whole experience. We're just continuing to, like, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. We're, just, like, cheering you on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Every step you take, it does get easier. But you have to choose to leave all of this behind. Just choose to leave it all behind. Go to a higher place and then gain perspective there. If you want to go back down there, you can, but go to a higher place first. Heal for a while, then you can go back. What do you think about that? Really have a hard time with it. Really have a hard time with it. I'm just having you inhale light. I'm having you feel the blue flame within your third eye, the purple flame within your crown. I'm really amplifying the energy of all your chakras, helping you get fresh energy, oxygen, helping you feel the loving dog companion that you've been for others as a memory that is a part of who you are to give you strength. I'm helping you come back to yourself, rehabilitate from within and move on from all of this. No more pain and suffering for you. You have just a lot of unresolved, sad memories. You say, okay, I, I'll leave here, but we go to another place and it's like a, a beach. Um, a dark blue ocean water and um, you're crying on the beach it's just unresolved emotion and it's a it's actually healthy it just feels like a lot of a long time of healing unresolved sad memories and this life other lives it's just like in your soul you know sadness in your soul so you're just crying 
I'm creating a safe space here for you. This is a really great landing point because at least we're moved. Um, we're moving up here. Um, and the next thing that we need to clear out is this unresolved emotions, which explains the hardship on your solar plexus because there is a lot of unresolved emotions. This can even be the hardship you've been going through with this these psychic experiences. And it feels like a, a much wider viewpoint than that. I'm going to give you just some suggestions, okay? So right now, you're just a place of emotional um, release, okay? In a very safe space where there's lots of angelic beings, lots of beings of love for you. And to support you and just continuing to release out these emotions, okay? It feels interconnected, a lot of a dimensional um, connection. Now, if there's anything that you're picking up on, information, this, that, and other messages, okay? Um, just try to clear out all the talk. Um, if you could transform the talk into a feeling, um, it's like light language. Light language is, it's not about what you say, per se. Um, it's about what is within what you're saying. And that that's why when light language has no language to it, but the light that is just flowing through your voice, um, your mind doesn't get in the way of just receiving that energy, right? You just receive it as whatever it is, you know? And you just let it be whatever it is without judging it. You just simply receive it. So if your guide spoke to you in a light language instead of actual words, you would be able to tell what messages are actually healing for you and what ones aren't. And you will start to let go of the light language that is hurting you. Because those words can sound like I love you, but really they're, they're knives and daggers, you know? So it's like when you translate the message into um, like, it doesn't matter what the words are, what does it feel like? When you change it into what it feels like, now you can be more discerning about who you're wanting to interact with. So don't worry about that shadow of spirit guide. He's done his part. Um, so we can move on from that now. Just moving on from all of that energy. Because you need to heal. You need to find yourself. You need to start working with um, healthy, um, supportive, loving beings of light. So uh, any messages you get from here forward, see if you can just not hear them in a language. But just challenge yourself to turn whatever that message was into like a song or a feeling um, and then see what it feels like. So you can read what is beneath the surface of the words and decide, is this what I want? No, I don't. I don't want to drink the dirty water. Your words are like dirty water. I don't want that in my life. Um, if you want to try to heal any of these beings, um, you can either A, just be like, nope, and literally just put their consciousness put their energy into a box ask archangel metatron here's the box archangel metatron i don't want this in my life anymore period done okay don't ever need that ever again all right that's one way you have to just completely let it go though too and you can do that another way is you know what i want to heal this being so you're gonna have to close your eyes and choose to see them inside yourself like like see their eyes like, look into their eyes. What do their eyes look like? I can't really tell what their eyes look like. Okay, well, just state that I'm staring at you right now. And now I'm taking my pretend energy hand, my hand. I'm in the energy world. Now my pretend hand, and I'm placing it into your heart. And I'm filling your heart with all the love that I have and gratitude that I have for every soul in the universe, including your soul. No matter what you've said or done, I still love you unconditionally as Jesus loves, right? Like, Jesus is like the symbol of unconditional love. Like, what would Jesus do? Jesus would put Jesus' hand into this demon and say, I love you for all that you are, and I am grateful for you. Now, feel the energy shift inside yourself. Don't be afraid of any of them, okay? Don't be afraid of any of them, because remember, they're the broken house. Um, don't be afraid of the broken house. Um, it's literally broken. <laughs> It needs love and support. It's not threatening. It's not evil. It's not um, twisted up. Um, unless we leave it that way and forget about it, it's like kids that get thrown away become broken houses too. So do souls. It happens to everything that gets like that. 
you know, but when love and nurture is put into it, now we can see the spirit within become bright and actually be a gift to all, you know, to the whole world. These demons are actually extraordinary spirits beneath the surface of this f broken facade. Um, they need help. <laughs> so you decide what you're ready for, okay? Um, if you're not ready to face, face them head on, um, then just put them in a box and send them away. If you want to challenge yourself to look at them, then use the techniques, okay, that I'm talking to you about. You just be Jesus for them. And you put the light into their hearts that they're struggling to receive for themselves, okay? Now you heal them. You be the Archangel Michael for their heart, okay? To heal them and help them find the light within so that they can transform and do the next thing on their soul journey, okay? Which might have nothing to do with you, which is great. Or they might be your friend. I don't know. But usually after they heal, they usually go away. Because once those demons heal, it's been a very long time since they've been in the light. So they'll usually thank you or they'll usually just disappear because they need to go meditate. They need to go back to source or whatever, okay? You feel like, you feel stronger, more aware, clearer. I still feel like there's a lot of unresolved... Um, feelings but um this is really great what we've accomplished in this session is really great and i'm giving you a big hug because it's so hard to go through these things and i'm proud of you work with love okay work within your heart let the messages be a light language and allow yourself to transmute the message like translate it in your heart. If it doesn't feel good, send it away or heal it. Um, if it feels good, then it that's actually a really helpful spirit that the, that's there that you can be grateful for, right? It's just a new way of translating the information that will help you um, start spending more time with the right types of spirits, okay? <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for this opportunity to um, connect with you and thank you for sharing with others. For those watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I also have two other YouTube channels, so you can visit me at Abby Normal and Zodiac Energy Readings. Um, I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, thank you all so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.